All right, so I want to take some time and just kind of demonstrate the uh, workflow that I've been uh, trying to develop for building alignments for transportation engineering purposes using FreeCAD. Uh, FreeCAD is a pretty different tool from your traditional 2D CAD, so you can't really just take the traditional 2D approaches and apply it straight to FreeCAD. That said, FreeCAD's approach I really think makes it simpler and, and more intuitive to build alignments than than your traditional two-day CAD approaches, and I'm really encouraged by that. Uh, specifically, the work seems to be aided by the Sketch or Workbench. Um, I really think the functionality that's going to serve this purpose uh, really is, is what's found in the Sketch or Workbench. Um, so anyway, just to get started, when we talk about laying out alignments in transportation engineering, an alignment is, well, it's the path the road follows, and it consists of basically two kinds of elements straight lines and curves, or we call them, or straight lines and arcs, which we call tangents and curves. Uh, and there's an important rule that is always obeyed regardless, and that is that the endpoint of one element is always tangentially constrained with the starting point of the next. Um, so for example, on the screen you see in front of you, I've drawn a straight line. We call that a tangent, a straight section of road. Uh, I might begin my alignment this way, and then supply a simple curve like so oops tell you what let's delete that switch off construction lines and do that again so I might I might add a simple curve to that tangent section to give some curvature to my road and then it would be typically followed by another tangent section. And then maybe just to change it up, I'd add a reverse curve, which is basically an S curve. And so on. And so I would build out the curvature of the alignment in this way using 2D CAD. And the process isn't that difficult, uh, but you have to know a lot about your curve geometry. Because in civil engineering, very specific uh, concepts are used to constrain and describe the shape of a curve. For example, um, and here I'm going to switch over to construction. For example, the starting point of a curve is often called the PC, your point of curvature, and the ending point of the curve is the PT, your point of tangency. Uh, and then off of each of those two points, a tangent line is typically drawn, it's much like this. And then, of course, those lines are tangentially constrained to the endpoints of the curve. Um, the nice thing about Sketcher is that it makes doing that and setting up a basic curve super simple. And, and it's really kind of important to understand this because very commonly in alignment development, curves are described by, for example, their radius and the length of their tangent. So if I want to describe a simple curve, I can come in here and apply a radius constraint and lock in my radius and then simply lock in the length of one of my tangents and having one in uh, I don't need to I don't need to apply a constraint to the other obviously it's it's a redundant constraint uh, and so I can go on just like this and I can apply this same approach to all of my curves slowly locking in the design of my horizontal alignment as I go and overall like I say I really really like this approach it's visual it's intuitive it's dead simple uh, and I just you know, it really pleased me to see that, that FreeCAD worked this well. Uh, but there are some problems. For example, in transportation engineering, these sorts of metrics that are applied to the curve, these, these uh, dimension, this dimensioning, is really, it's cluttering and it's really not necessary. Uh, when we're working with an individual curve and reshaping it, you know, it becomes important to know those dimensions. But at a glance, the dimensions of, of for example, if I Lock in the length of that tangent, the length of the tangent, the, the uh, of the tangent section, the length of the curve tangents, the curves radius. That information doesn't need to be known explicitly throughout the entire design process. So while it's important to have those specific dimension constraints, uh, 
um, their visibility is really more of a, a problem uh, uh, than it is beneficial to the design process. So I, I really think that something needs to be done to help uh, alleviate that problem. Another issue is that when you apply these tangential constraints to these elements, uh, they shift, they move. Uh, so for example, if I pick these two points and tangentially constrain them, you see that they move. Uh, and now I can mitigate that by somewhat, in fact I can mitigate that substantially really by just locking in the shape of the curve with these design constraints, or with these dimension, uh, with these uh, geometric constraints I guess. Uh, and and I can kind of help myself by locking the starting point hang on I can help myself a little bit by locking the starting point of my alignment to the origin what am I doing wrong oh I see there we go so I can help myself a little bit by locking in the starting point of, of the tangent to the origin and maybe in the course of laying out a new alignment you would simply consider that origin point to be a relative starting point, you know, that's arbitrarily chosen as somewhere in the model, uh, and that and that would work okay. And by applying these constraints, I think we can generally uh, learn how to. We can generally live with the uh, with the way that the. Uh, excuse me, here I'm a little distracted. We can generally live with the way that the. Uh, the, the geometry moves and changes and shifts as we as we put our alignment together. I think in the end those issues are, are overcomable and they're really not that big of a deal. Uh, but really, like I say, one of the real problems is this uh, is this uh, explicit dimensioning that goes on that you can't bury. You know, it's important for us to be able to uh, to uh, constrain dimensions of our elements. But at the same time, like I say, these, these are really just more distracting than they are helpful in the course of the design process. Uh, because what's really useful in the course of laying out an alignment is a concept called stationing. And this is the measurement of the length of the curve. And it's typically notated along the curve itself. And you, what you'll typically see are a variety of, of orthogonal lines of various lengths. You know, longer lines at every 100 feet and shorter lines at every 50 feet um, if you're working in Imperial or, or U.S. customary. If you're working in metric, stationing is done by the meter, uh, 150 meter increments, I think. Um, so developing a way to uh, developing a way to uh, calculate the stationing along the curve at any given point uh, starts to become a bigger and more important issue uh, that I'm not exactly certain yet how that can be overcome. Uh, it would be nice to be able to display that stationing along the curve itself, but that may not really be possible in Sketcher. Um, and I don't know how necessary it is at this point, again, in terms of what the total workflow is going to look like. But there's going to be a need to be able to reference points along the curve or positions along the curve using uh, stationary, a, a stationary, a stationing uh, method of measurement. So uh, I just wanted to take a second and show what the total geometry package looks like for uh, horizontal alignments and whatever ends up being developed for horizontal alignments uh, is also good for vertical I mean the terminology is different the curves are a little different but overall it's essentially all the same geometry so it will translate pretty well but uh, here's an example of of a horizontal alignment that's broken up into its component parts and you can see how quickly uh, the alignment itself is obscured by that dimensioning, um, and it really needs, you know, that really needs to be dealt with. But if we zoom in a little bit, you can see, you know, your standard tangent section here. I've got a two-center curve, which is simply two curves that are tangent on one end. Um, I've applied my tangent lines from the PC to the PT of the entire curve, uh, but really, in order to constrain this curve properly, separate tangent lines need to be applied to each curve. Otherwise, when I for example, if I make these two tangent, the length of the curve will change substantially. Um, here I have a reverse curve, and you can see my tangents are laid in. Over here is a three center curve, one, two, and three. And then here is a special kind of curve. It's called a spiral curve, and these are by and far the most complex curves in civil engineering, transportation engineering. Uh, but they're also very necessary, especially in areas where you have high curves. 
uh, that need to be banked or super elevated. Uh, so that's where spirals come in really, really handy. Uh, so a spiral curve really consists of two tangent sections, one on either end, typically of the same length, followed by two shorter length curves of equal radius. You can see the radius points right there. And then in the middle is, a, is the central curve, which has a longer radius. Uh, and what I found is that the more complex these, geom these geometries get, the more complicated and difficult it becomes to properly constrain them. And very often what happens is if you apply a tangential constraint to two geometries, you know, that seems to work relatively well, and, and we're not too concerned about the way it fits together. But if I keep going and connect these together, eventually, and maybe it'll work here, maybe it won't. Let's see. Yeah, this will probably do it. Right. Eventually what happens is if, if the curve segments aren't exactly laid out in aren't laid out in uh, tangentially with each other by default, then when you apply that tangential constraint, there's always the potential for having problems like this, uh, where one point gets shifted past another and it creates this loop, or sometimes the tangent gets reversed and the curve goes the other way, things like that. So that's kind of a problem that I think, you know, if, if I develop a Python, if we can develop a Python script that encapsulates, for example, a, a reverse curve and all of its constraining geometry, uh, when, when the user simply needs to select, you know, for example, if this is the end of our alignment and we're still building it out, if I pick this tangent and I, and I click apply, you know, and, and, and uh, choose a button that applies or adds a reverse curve, um, we can let the script to hopefully do some math or something to kind of figure out what tangent is at that point and align the curve so it's essentially tangential to begin with before the tangential constraint is applied so that we can avoid these sorts of conditions happening. So there's a few bugs, a few problems in the UI, but this is such an incredibly good looking tool and I'm really so happy to see that it applies, uh, applies itself very well to a civil engineering workflow. So I really hope we can make this work.